All right, welcome. So this is a, a new trial that we're working on. This is actually hemp waste fiber. So I'll, I'll show you guys in a minute where what the raw material looks like. But this is extracted flour, hemp, that uh, was CO2 extracted. So there's no like butane or anything like that involved. It's just cold pressurized CO2. And I'm doing a couple mixtures. So I got pure hemp fiber. I got fuel pellets, soy hull, and hemp fiber. And then I got soy hull, fuel pellets, and hemp fiber, but in different ratios. And then I did one just, just uh, fuel pellets. And actually it's doing horribly, which is funny. Um, and then I got another fuel pellets and uh, hemp fiber, fuel pellets, hemp fiber. And then I got fuel pellets and hemp fiber, just different ratios. Um, so we're gonna see how this does. These are almost ready for fruiting. They're like just finally finishing colonizing. So they probably need another week maybe before they go into fruiting. I forget the exact date that we made these, but yeah, they should be doing in the next week. And then once I get the results, I'll uh, kind of zero in on what group did best and, and tweak that a little bit. But uh, I'm trying to use as much as possible. I'm getting it for really cheap. And uh, I think if I can get it pelletized, it would work really well in the bagger. I'm gonna go show you guys the, uh, this is the incubation. I'm gonna go show you guys the, some shiitake, the, the raw material. So the raw material, it, it comes in super sacks and it's a very dusty, powdery, messy uh, material. But if we had it pelletized, I think it'd be a lot easier to work with. But this is the, the fiber. So it's hammer milled. It's flour that was hammer milled. You see there's a little bit of stem material in there too. There are some clumps of like keef, um, but for the most part, it's it's a very fine powder. It actually, as you can see the, the one in there, it actually does pretty well when it's just by itself. I was surprised, I was thinking it was gonna be such a fine grind that it would like choke itself. Like if, you, if you've ever worked with really fine sawdust, it tends to uh, not breathe because it doesn't have any any airflow but it seems to it seems to actually do pretty well once it's hydrated this is just the hemp fiber you can see it's uh it's a good consistency it's nice and fluffy so yeah really excited about that this is literally like seven minutes down the road for me the, the extraction facility and they have like 20 tons of it so if i can get that to work in even half of my my substrate it would significantly decrease my my materials cost other than that, we got some uh, new species that we, new, new strains that I got in here. Got some reishi going in the bag, doing some lion's mane in the bag. These are actually comb tooth, um, fruiting them in the bag. So we got like that guy. Um, also doing some turkey tail, some more lion's mane. And this is all gonna be extracted. So we're just gonna let it fill the whole top with um, fruit bodies. If it hits the filter, we just push it down and that way it'll keep going and we'll just have that whole top void filled with mushrooms when we harvest. Same thing with the, the uh, reation. Once it hits the filter patch, you push it down. We're doing a couple trials with this with the new Horizon bag. We have these available XLST. If you're doing reation, I highly recommend at least getting a normal XLST because um, these sit for so long, like two to six months, and typically towards the end, they get contaminated and usually it comes through the filter patch. So you don't really want to use an A filter for reishi. So we, we did do some for, for uh, trial comparison, but um, I, I don't really recommend doing the A filters. You can also see that this one's inflating. This one's not, because the cheese breathes so much more. So there's little things like that that you know we're noting, and this one's a little bit more inflated. This one's very inflated, because it's an A, it's like a balloon. But, um, yeah, so we're just playing around with that, doing some experiments in the shop, doing a lot of tinctures, doing a lot of um, dehydrating with winter. We had really low sales as always. So not, not really a big surprise for us in Kansas. We're really slow, it's cold, nobody goes out when it's 15 degrees outside. So um, we're just dehydrating all the surplus, building up our, our dehydrated while we have the time to do that, because it does take a lot of time to you know, dry them out and package them up and all that. And then um, hopefully sell it all throughout the spring and summer. So check out MyersMushrooms.com, get your grow supplies, bags, equipment. Um, make sure you subscribe to me, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I post a lot more on Facebook and Instagram. 
then I do post videos on YouTube. So if you want to see the little in-between stuff that I'm working on, like right now I'm posting a lot about my extractions, uh, follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Take it easy. Keep on mushrooming.